So here I have a thermometer that's similar to what you probably used in class. It's a thermometer like you would expect, and it has everything on it that you would think you would see. It has all the lines and all the numbers to tell you what temperature something is while you're using it. But a long time ago, scientists didn't just order their thermometers online or from a catalog. They had to make their thermometers, and their thermometers looked more like this. Now, this looks pretty similar, but if you look very closely, you can see that there aren't any lines or numbers on this thermometer. And that's what it would be like for scientists long ago. They would have to have a craftsman make a thermometer, and then they would have to put on all the numbers and increments. Now, that created a problem. Scientists all over the world would make slightly different thermometers, but they would want them to read temperature the same way. So they had to come up with a solution. They had to figure out a way for scientists all over the world to be able to make thermometers and then have rules for putting on the lines and numbers so that all scientists could talk about temperature the same way. So here's your question. How do you think they solved that problem? How do you think scientists knew where to put the numbers so that they could make their thermometers the same way all around the world? Take a minute, talk about that with your classmates, and I'll be back to talk about the answer. So to solve this problem, scientists came up with an ingenious solution. First, they had to figure out something that all scientists had access to, and that thing was water. All scientists around the world had access to water that they could freeze or boil. So scientists said that they should take their new thermometers and put them into ice that's melting. And ice that's melting always melts at the same temperature, no matter how much ice is there. So scientists could put their thermometers into the ice that's melting and then mark them at that temperature. And they decided that that temperature would be zero degrees. Then scientists placed their thermometers into boiling water and they marked a line where the temperature rose to there. They decided that would be 100 degrees. So now, by using the freezing and melting point of water and the boiling point of water, scientists had their thermometers marked at zero degrees and 100 degrees. And they could just put 100 equal spaces between those two lines, and all of their thermometers all over the world would be able to read and measure temperature in the same way. One of the first scientists to come up with this idea to use the freezing point and the boiling point of water as a way to make thermometers was named Celsius. So we call this the Celsius temperature scale in his honor. So it's no coincidence that water melts and freezes at zero degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. That's actually how the temperature scale was designed. So I hope this helps you remember the boiling point of water and the freezing and melting point of water. I'm sure this is also what you and your classmates came up with. Keep up the great work. I'll see you next time.